Genesis 12 and verse 1 says, Now the Lord had said to Abram, Get out of your country, from your family and from your father's house, to a land that I will show you. I'll make you a great nation, I'll bless you, and I'll make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse him who curses you. And in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Yes. We're going to do a little reading today. I hope y'all don't mind reading. The Bible is meant to be read. So we're going to do a little reading today. Okay. The Bible says in uh, Genesis chapter 15, it says, after these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision, saying, do not be afraid, Abram. Verse 15, verse 1. I am your shield, your exceedingly great reward. But Abram said, Lord God, what will you give me, seeing I go childless, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus? Then Abram said, look, you have given me no offspring. Indeed, one born in my house is my heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him, saying, this one shall not be your heir but one who will come from your own body shall be your heir. Then he brought him outside and said, Look now toward heaven and count the stars if you are able to number them. And he said to him, So shall your descendants be. Verse 7, Then he said to him, I am the Lord who brought you out of Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land to inherit it. And he said, Lord God, how shall I know that I will inherit it? So he said to him, Bring me a three-year-old heifer, a three-year-old female goat, a three-year-old ram, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. Then he brought all these things to him and cut them in two. He, he cut them. What did he do? What did he do? He cut them. He severed them. He separated them. Down the middle. The place and place each piece. Say pieces. Say pieces. Say it again. Pieces. He placed each piece opposite the other. But he did not cut the birds in two. And when the vultures came down on the carcasses, Abram drove them away. Now when the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and behold, horror and great darkness fell upon him. Then he said to Abram, know certainly that your descendants will be strangers in a land that is not theirs. This, listen, God's giving Abram a promise here. He's giving him a promise. He says that your descendants shall be strangers in a land, strangers in a land that is not theirs and will serve them. And they will afflict them for 400 years. What kind of promise is that? And also the nation whom they serve, I will judge. Afterward, 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 afterward. See, with every promise comes an afterward. Afterward, afterward. You're going to understand that more and more as we get into this. It says afterward. Let me get back to where I was here. They shall come out with great possessions. Now as for you, you shall go to your fathers in peace. You shall be buried at a good old age. But in the fourth generation, they shall return here for the iniquity of the Amorites is not yet complete. I love this. Verse 17. And it came to pass when the sun went down and it was dark that behold, there appeared a smoking oven and a burning torch that passed between those pieces. Say pieces. What did the torch pass through? pass through pieces pieces God always walks in the midst of pieces on the same day the Lord made a covenant with Abram saying God made a what with Abram God made a what with Abram see what God, God was doing in the pieces God always cuts covenant in pieces when your life is in shambles that's where he cuts covenant when you're going through a storm that's where he cuts covenant God cuts covenant in pieces. It says, and on the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying to your descendants, I have given this land from the river of Egypt to the great river, the river Euphrates, the Kenites, the Kenizzites, the Katmonites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, and the Rephim, the Amorites, and the Canaanites, and the Girgashites, and the Jebusites. In other words, I'm giving you not just the land, but everything that comes with it. I'm giving you everything that comes with the land. Father God, it is our will to do your will. None of us and all of you, in Jesus' name, 
Amen. You may be seated. Real, real quickly, we're going to continue talking about where we were last Sunday. We started a series called The Blessing. Everybody say The Blessing. Can you say that with me, The Blessing? Can you say that again, The Blessing? So Pastor Samuel got us kicked off with The Blessing last week and did just an extraordinary job. Yes, he did. Now, now listen, 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 listen. Don't ever do anything halfway. If you're going to clap or praise, go ahead and give it. Yeah. Yeah. Because if you're not, you might as well have kept it. Because you didn't mean it anyway. Amen. Praise God. But, but he did uh, just, just an extraordinary job and, and uh, something uh, just phenomenal happened in here last Sunday. Uh, I know because I was watching. Uh, and uh, it, it was uh, you, you, it, it was just tangible. It was coming through, even even the screen. Uh, so I thank God for His presence. Uh, so we are talking about the blessing. Everybody say the blessing. And now, uh, Pastor Samuel got us started on something last week that I want to come back. Uh, and just do a point of clarification, not, not uh, going back and correcting Pastor Samuel, but actually going, going back because Pastor Samuel and I and some of our ministry team, we meet uh, on a consistent basis to build out our messages, our, our message series. And I cast a vision for it uh, and uh, tell them what God is saying to me about a particular uh, subject. Uh, and they give fee feedback and uh, add, add whatever. Uh, and uh, I give Pastor Samuel permission to put, to put uh, some Samuel on it, <laughs> and uh, he, he puts that on there. Uh, at, but uh, there, there was something that the Lord actually not corrected me on, but uh, just to come back and make sure that we clarify to the people that, 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 uh, that we bring a point of emphasis on something. That's it. That's the word. A point of emphasis, and uh, I I want to I want to bring a point of emphasis on uh, Psalms twenty four, Psalms twenty four. Now, why did you read those two scriptures before? Because I was I was setting up something. We're going to be hanging our hat not on Psalms twenty four, but we're going to be hanging our hat in Genesis fifteen when God was cutting covenant with Abraham. Who was he cutting covenant with? He was cutting covenant with Abram. Let me go back uh, and just do a uh, point of review. Just, just a point of review. Uh, we said that this series is to help you gain a greater understanding of blessing, what it is and how to identify it so that you can receive it and how to walk in it. And so as we begin our review, let's talk about what blessing is not. I always like starting out talking about what something is not in order to describe it. So let's, so let's start out talking about what blessing is not. Blessing is not a thing to get. Blessing is not something that you do necessarily. Everybody looking for the blessing. Everybody looking for their blessing to come in. They looking for the windfall. They call the windfall the blessing. Well, if you call the windfall the blessing, you've missed the whole point. You've missed the whole point. The blessing is not something to get. It's not something that you even do necessarily. Blessing, the blessing is not a position to attain. You know, stop walking around and feeling not so blessed because you didn't get the position. Because, because you hadn't made it as far in, uh, in, in your place of employment where you think you should be. Stop thinking that you're not blessed. That don't have anything to do with the blessing. Hallelujah. Blessing is not a title. Say, say that, the blessing is not a title. The blessing is not how much money you got. That's not the blessing. We've deceived people. We got them thinking that if you drive a big car, that's the blessing. If you live in a big house, that's the blessing. That's not the blessing. Now, that stuff comes with the blessing, but that's not the blessing. Blessing is a force or a power that comes to position, deliver, or release. What does it come to do? Position, deliver, or release. In Hebrew, blessing is translated barak or baraka. Praise, adoration. It means to 
salute. That's where we get our word salutation. When we uh, greet each other, salutation is a greeting. It's a blessing. Or benediction, it's a blessing. Uh, in days of antiquity, uh, in the Middle East, when they greeted each other, they greeted each other with a salutation. They greeted each other with a blessing. Or they, or they, when they, before they left out of each other's presence, they, they gave a blessing. Mm -hmm. and, and so that's what I just gave Arabella Rose. I gave her a blessing. I was greeting her into this world with a blessing that's going to follow her throughout her life. Amen. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. hallelujah. Yes, yes. And, uh, and so, uh, you know, many of us, many of us, we think a blessing is a, is a, is a phrase, is, a, is religious phraseology. <laughs> it's, uh, um, I, don't, I don't know about how many of you grew up uh, in a church like me, but you wasn't saved if somebody asked you how you doing and you said fine. You say, how you do it? Blessed and highly favored and walking in the favor of God. And you? <laughs> and you better tell them the same thing. You better tell them the exact same thing. That you blessed and highly favored and walking in the favor of God. But, but the blessing is not a phrase. It's not a phrase to be quoted. To sound churchy. To sound religious. Say, that's not what the blessing is. Uh, the blessing is also translated, the Hebrew Greek lexicon says the primary notion behind the word blessing lies in the term breaking or breaking down. Breaking or breaking down. I love that because I've never looked at blessing that way. I've never looked at blessing as breaking. Blessing, breaking, blessing, breaking, blessing, break. That seems like an anomaly. That seems like an oxymoron. Blessing, breaking, blessing, breaking. Blessing, breaking. Blessing is equated with breaking. <laughs> yeah, according to the Greek lexicon, blessing equates to bless or e equates to, to breaking. When Jesus, Jesus, the Bible says when he fed the 5,000 uh, men, not including uh, women and children, the Bible says Jesus took the bread, he lifted it up to the Father, and he gave thanks for it. He what? Blessed it, and he broke it. Blessing is a breaking down. You don't see when God sends things in your life to break you down as a blessing. Ain't nobody saying nothing about that. <laughs> I want to, 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 I want to take a look at something called the blessing progression. The blessing progression. The blessing comes to you. Say, blessing comes to you. Where's my gift box? Where's my gift box? When, when, when the blessing comes, the blessing comes to you. It comes to you. And it comes upon you. Say, it comes upon me. Say, the blessing. Say it again. The blessing. The. I want you to make sure, I want to make sure you understand what we're talking about. We're talking about the. T-H-E. The. Not a blessing. The. Say that with me, the, the, the blessing. And the blessing comes to you and upon you. And because of the blessing, you receive blessing. Write that down. Because of the blessing, you receive blessing. Now, I want you, I want you to get this. You are not the blessing. <laughs> you are not the blessing. You are not the blessing. When we talk about the, anything spiritual talking about the, is talking about that which can be equated with God. Yes, God. Say God is the blessing. Is the blessing. Say it again. God is, God is the blessing. Now, I want you to make it personal. Say God is my blessing. Is my blessing. Say it again. God is my blessing. Is my blessing. Can I have a chair, Eric, right here? Would you please grab this, grab this chair and uh, sit, it, sit it right here in the middle? Who's your blessing? God. No, see, I need you to get this. Who's your blessing? God. Because sometimes we get so uh, lopsided and out of, out of order uh, uh, and, and just out of alignment with God because we get uh, disorientated. 
<laughs> I just made up a word. Dis, disoriented. I got tickled on that myself. We get disoriented with God. And we get out of sorts with God. People stop coming to church because they don't understand this. Or people grow pessimistic about the things of God because they don't understand this. And you start judging yourself wrongly because you don't understand this. Is that God is your blessing. <clears throat> Lord Jesus, I'm preaching so good. Help them to get the goodness of it. Say, God is my blessing. Let me, let, me, let me help you, sisters. Your future husband is not your blessing. Your future husband is not the blessing. Your God is the blessing. Your God is the, the outfit that you, that you crying over, that you saw some other sister wearing, that you don't have enough money to get, and you said, I'm not blessed because I can't get it. That ain't the blessing. Your God, your God is the blessing. Your God is the blessing. Who's the blessing? Who is the blessing? God is the blessing. And then, so we talked about the blessing. Now I want to talk about blessing. Say blessing. 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 blessing, the blessing, blessing, blessing rather, is the force that comes to position you. It's the force that comes to position you to be. It's the force that comes to position you to be. To be what? To be blessed. God told Abram in Genesis 12, he's talking to a heathen. He's talking to a godless person who came from a godless family. And he says, obey me and I'm going to bless you. Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. That, that went right over your head. Y'all missed it. Y'all missed it. Abram should be making you shout right now. Because you don't have to be born with a silver spoon in your mouth to be blessed. You don't have to come from a family who just uh, walking around with angel's wings on, on, on their backs. And you grew up in church to be blessed. No, 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 no. God says the blessing is not determinate on your position in life. He says, I bless whom I want to bless. I curse whom I want to curse. Yeah, 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 yeah. God says that you don't read the Bible enough to be blessed. You don't, you don't pray enough to be blessed. You don't, you don't put enough money in church to be blessed. He says, I am the one who determines who's blessed. And he says, and if I call you blessed, you better take my word for it. And I'm telling you, that when God said, Abraham, I'm going to bless you. God Almighty. He says, I'm going to bless you. And then you receive Jesus by faith. You become children of Abraham. Let me teach this. And the Bible says, and, the, and blessed with faithful Abraham. Galatians chapter 4 are the seed of Abraham. The seed of Abraham, he wasn't talking about you, he was talking about Jesus. Jesus Christ was the seed of Abraham. But if, if the seed of Abraham lives in your heart, then the seed of Abraham can't live in your heart unless, unless you are blessed too. If what's been blessed lives in your heart, then, that, then you're blessed. Some of y'all looking at me like, oh, let me back up. If the spirit of Christ lives in your heart, you have accepted Jesus as your Lord. You have confessed him as your Lord and personal Savior. Hallelujah. You have denied your way and you have accepted his way. And salvation has entered into your heart. Then, then you have received what's been blessed. God, Jesus. And if you have received what's been blessed, that makes you blessed also. So when God told Abraham, you shall be blessed, he was talking to Samuel, Deanna, and Sharonda, and Javon, and Tradina, and everybody on the face of this earth. Shout, I'm blessed. No, shout it, I'm blessed. Yeah. 
See yourself the right way. The force that comes, the blessing is the force that comes to position you to be, to be what? Blessed. And you're blessed when you receive the blessing. I'm blessed when I do what? When I receive the blessing. When you receive the blessing, you are blessed, watch this, to, watch the progression, B, A, say A. A. Now we move from the to A. Now we're talking about you. We were talking about God, but now we're talking about you. Somebody say, he's talking about me now. You have been blessed, Javon, to be a blessing. Hallelujah. Say, I've been blessed to be a blessing. And you don't have to be no millionaire to be a blessing. Because God didn't tell you to go and be the blessing. They, they ain't hear what I'm saying. God says be a blessing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, and so God says take what you got. That's how you be a blessing. Take what you got. Stop crying over what you don't got. If I can, if I can talk like that. Stop crying over what you don't got. And be grateful for what you do got. So that you can take what you do got. And be a blessing. Glory to God. Shout out my blessing. Shout out my blessing. One more time and really shout it. I'm a blessing. See, religion can't handle this. Because religion wants you to jump through five laws and be perfect to be blessed. So you can be a blessing. See, this is what I got to come back and reemphasize from Psalm 24. Because if you look at Psalms 24, come on, let's look at Psalms 24. Psalms 24 says, The earth and everything in it, the world and all of its inhabitants belong to the Lord. For he laid its foundations on the seas and established it on the rivers. Who may ascend to the mountains of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? Watch this. Boy, the the religious folk, they really start getting happy dancing. Bless the Lord. Bless God. Bless God. Those who have clean hands and a true heart, baby. Who has not appealed to what is false. Who has not sworn deceitfully. Bless God. That's me. That, see, if you don't read that correctly and if you don't understand the blessing, you will read this, especially as it continues in verse uh, 5, it says, he will receive the blessing. Who will will receive the blessing? Bless God, those who have clean hands and a pure heart. And it calls you to look your nose down on people. And it'll cause you not to walk in the blessings that God has for your life. Because when you look at your life, your life don't look like you got clean hands and a pure heart. I'm trying to help some. I am helping somebody in here right now. Who has not appealed to what is false. Who has not sworn deceitfully. That means you have not worshipped other gods. You have not, and then before you go to judging those who worship uh, other gods as idols, when you have not took things and looked at it as your source, and they were just meant to be resources, those are idols. Yes, 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 yes. That person you got sideways with uh, because they wouldn't help you and you knew they had the money to help you. And, and God didn't release them at that moment. You Little did you know to help you at that moment because you had to go through what you had to go through. Because what he was trying to do is get you to stop building idols out of people. Woo! And get you to start worshiping the blessing. Get you to start seeing him as the, the blessing. Who's the blessing? 
Who's the blessing? Who's the blessing? And so, and so it says those who have clean hands, those who have a pure heart, and those, those who have not sworn falsely, they shall receive the blessing. I'm saying, now wait a minute, God. There's something about that scripture that don't add up. Because Abraham received the blessing by faith. But this reads like the only way I'm going to get the blessing is I got to be halfway perfect. Let's talk about this covenant. I'm done. Say covenant. Say covenant. Say it again. Covenant. Say it one more time. Covenant. Blessing did not come to Abram to make him rich, but to position him. See, Abram already had a lot of stuff before he met God. He did. Go back and research. When he left out of Ur, he had a whole lot of stuff. He brought all that stuff with him. Before he knew God. Before he met God. So God didn't bless Abram to give him a lot of stuff. God blessed Abram, watch this, to make him significant. <laughs> Say to make him significant. He blessed him to make him significant. The blessing comes to make him significant. God always sends the blessing, we said last week, in your needy state. The word, and when the blessing shows up, I got to cover this, it shows up in the form of the word that comes in a direct, help somebody this morning, God, contradiction to your circumstances. The word never tells you the obvious. The word never tells you the obvious. Samuel! Your name's Samuel. That ain't God. They didn't need God to tell him that. That's the obvious. That's the obvious. When the word of God shows up, the word of God shows up to tell you what has not manifested yet. What is yet to come. What you are yet to be. Hallelujah. When the word of God shows up, the word of God sh shows up to contradict how your situation looks right now. You're going to be wealthy, and you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna do all these wonderful, magnificent things, but yet you're so broke, busted, and disgusted when that word comes to you. And don't you disregard that word because of your circumstances. Because your circumstances has nothing to do with the promises of God. Your circumstances has nothing. I'm talking to somebody. Your circumstances, your marriage has nothing to do with the, with the blessing of the Lord. The promise shows up because you need it the most when it shows up. Abraham, Abraham, stay your hand. Genesis 15. Or was it Genesis 22? He's getting ready to come down with, with a knife on Isaac. Abraham needed God to speak up. Because he was getting ready to have to kill his only son. And when God spoke up, he saw Abraham was getting ready to, to obey him. Look at what God says. He says, for now I know. And he says, because you have proved to me through your obedience that you trust me, that you count me as the blessing and not Isaac. That you count me as the blessing and not Isaac. See, 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 you have not proven to God that you really trust him as the blessing until you allow your most wonderful thing to die. Ooh. If I was a rookie preacher, I wouldn't think I was doing a good job. Based on that silent response. But that was rough for some folk. Because we, like we don't like letting go of our wonderful. We don't like letting, letting, letting go of, of what looks like the wonderful. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't that wonderful? Every, every time we look at it, it makes you go, isn't that, isn't that wonderful? Isn't that such wonderful? That's just wonderfulness. 
That's just wonderfulness until God says, bring me your wonderfulness. Bring it to the mountain and sacrifice it. Cut it up in pieces. But I've been wanting to do this all of my life. Cut it up in pieces. Because until you are willing to cut it up in pieces, I cannot trust that you understand that I am the blessing and not your wonderful. I'm preaching real good. Almost done. We said the blessing has to be received. Come here, Eric. Please sit in this seat, sir. No, better yet, uh, Minister Gus. Run down here, sir, please. See a 60-year-old man run. Where's he at? Is he outside? Oh, he's on the parking lot? Okay. Tell him I called his name. There he is. He's out working. He's out working. He's out working. Give him a hand clap. Would you sit in that chair for me? The blessing has to be, I want you to say it. When I say to be, y'all so slow this morning. When I say to be, you say receive. All right. The blessing has to be. The blessing has to be. I'm so glad he did that, Shannon, because that's how we receive the blessing. I said, that's how we receive the blessing. We ain't taking it serious. We don't even know if it's for us or not. We don't, we don't grab it and take a hold of it because we don't really believe that God's sending it to us. That's why, women, God has sent you a blessing. You can't receive it because you've been so beat up by others. God is trying to bless you, and you're not positioned to receive it because, watch this, you're still worshiping wonderful instead of the blessing. But receive it means to, to latch hold of it by faith and say, this is mine already. Somebody say already. My life don't look like it, but already I receive it. My marriage don't look like it, but already I receive it. My money don't look like it, but already I receive it. Now receive it. The blessing has to be. That's it. He grabbed that like, don't go on it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's mine. It's mine. All right, sit down. You don't, you, don't, you don't preach for me. You just be the illustration. <laughs> Blessing received by faith. Say, that's how I receive it. I receive it by what? That's how I receive it. I receive it by what? Faith. When blessing comes, blessing comes with a promise. And number two, it comes with an oath. It comes with a promise and it comes with an oath. But the blessing and the promise can only be enacted by a covenant. The blessing and the promise comes with two things. What are those two things? It comes with a promise and a oath, oath, oath. An oath, an oath is a swearing. You know, your parents used to tell you when you were little, don't swear. Don't swear. You know, like God was going to strike you down by lightning. Don't swear. Don't swear. The Lord, the Lord don't like you to swear. But the blessing comes with a promise and with an oath. Now we're getting into legal terms here. Because now we're talking about covenant. Covenant is legal. It's actually a legal term. Yes. And within, within a covenant, there are promises made. But then there's an oath. There's an oath that is given. A swearing in, if you will, that you'll keep your word. That's why they have you when you go to testify. You put your hand on the Bible. Put your right hand on the Bible and you lift your, lift your left hand and you say, I swear to tell the whole truth. Nothing but the truth. So help me God. 
when God had that meeting with, with, with Abram in Genesis 22 up on that mountain, when Abram proved to him that you are my blessing, when God had that meeting, God, God took his contract out. He says, all right, now we're ready to work this contract. He said, we're ready to work this contract out. Oh, 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 oh. God says, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, no. Mm -mm, mm -mm. I don't need no magistrate. I don't need no justice of the, of the peace. Mm -mm. I don't need no county, county clerk to make this real. God says, watch this. I swear. Watch this. Go back and read Genesis 22. Blessing. I will bless you. Multiplying. I will multiply you. What was he doing? He was swearing. Yes, sir. He was swearing. He was swearing. He was saying, boy, I swear I'm going to bless you. If a promise ain't enough, I swear, I swear on myself, I'm going to bless you, Abram. If my promise is not weighty enough, surely my word will be, I swear. And he says, by swearing, I'm obligating myself to follow through on what I said. And so God cut a covenant. He cut covenant. And so if you jump to Genesis 22, which I don't have time to do, but where's my Plato? If you jump to Genesis 22, if you jump to Genesis 22, you got my knife? Yes, sir. Abram lay on the ground. Bring me some doves. Bring me. Name what God told him to bring him in Genesis chapter 15. Or 12. What was it? Put it on the screen for me. Heifer. Three-year-old goats. Three-year-old ram. Turtle dove. Young pigeon. Okay, I got it. Cut it in half, Abram. Take the knife and split it, cut. That's, that's, that's the definition of covenant. Covenant means to cut inward. It means to cut inward. Hava, hava. It's an inward cutting. Hava, hava. It's an inward cutting. And you make a cut inward so that blood can flow. Incision is made to cause blood to flow because blood is critical in covenant. In days of antiquity, uh, uh, in uh, lands of old, they would cut covenant by two prominent people having substitutes who would stand in for each other. And they would make promises to each other. And they would have the substitutes go and make the promise and do the swearing. And the substitutes, not the people who were about to be in covenant, but the people, their substitutes, they literally took a knife and drew blood. And they would take, they would take their blood and mix it and mingle it. And they would take some gunpowder and they would rub it into the wound so that it would be a forever remaining mark on their body that these two people are in covenant. And if at any time, if any one of them break the promises according to this covenant, then that covenant is null and void. But God says, I'm going to make a covenant with you, Abraham, that cannot be annulled. And so, and then God also said, get down there and go to sleep. He says, because this time, This time, ain't no substitute standing in for us. Because if he had left Abram awake, then Abram would have been responsible for part of the covenant coming to pass. But he put Abram out of his consciousness so that God through a smoking furnace and a burning lamp could walk through the pieces that Abraham had brought him 
and cut covenant with him as he walked through the bloody pieces. Oh, y'all ain't getting it, but y'all going to get it. And so as Abram walked through the bloody pieces, as God walked through the bloody pieces that Abram brought him, God walked through those pieces and cut covenant with him. And what God was saying was, I know you don't know what's going on and you're not supposed to know what's going on. He says, because I'm going to be the responsible party for making sure the promise comes to pass in your life. And so every time you see pieces of your life, you better start rejoicing and shouting because God is down in the pieces. God is down in the pieces. I dare you to high five your neighbor and say, you was crying over the pieces. You better start shouting over the pieces. You shout over pieces. You shout over pieces. Because God sends the covenant of blessing in your pieces. When people walk away from you, when people hurt you, when you get the divorce, when you lose the job, when you lose the baby, when your best friend turned their back on you, when you went bankrupt, when you went through something that you thought that you weren't going to be able to hold it all together as you walked through it, God says, that's okay because blessing, I'm going to bless you. And multiplying, I'm going to multiply you. If you don't lose faith in me, the blessing, he says, just know that you're not in the pieces. You're not broke up by yourself. He says, I am with you. And so I was sitting in the living room. I was sitting in the living room one morning with my wife. This has been a week ago. I, maybe it was two weeks ago. And Pastor Samuel sent a prophetic word to his spiritual mom. And he said, tell mom, I've been praying for her. And God told me to tell her this. And one of the things, I won't go into everything that he said, but one of the things he says, he says, tell mom, God says she is a mother of nations. She is a mother of nations. And I began to, to read the text to her as we were praying together and as we were taking communion. I began to read the text to her. And as I read the text to her, she began to cry. And she grabbed my hand and she said, but I don't. she was shaking. She says, but I don't want to be the mother of nations. She says, what is the mother of nations anyway? I don't want to be it if I got to go through this. If I got to go through this, this is traumatic. I don't want to go through this. God, don't make me the mother of nations. And I said, I said, listen to me. I said, listen to me. I said, God ain't ask you what you want. I said, God ain't ask you what you want. I said, faith is not to please you. Faith is to please God. God will not ask you what you want to be. God will tell you what he needs you to be. And then send you into situations that look like pieces. That while you're in the pieces, he's walking around making promises. And God will always send a promise that looked like you can't handle it. Because he told Abram, he says, he says, your descendants shall be as many as the stars. Can you imagine getting that? And your loins have been cut off. You have no more flow going. You couldn't get nobody pregnant if you thought you could. God, who am I talking to? God always sends you a promise that you think you can't handle. God always sends you a promise too big for you. Pastor Communion Elements out. Somebody come move this table for me, please. No, no, you stay down there, Abram. You got it, Minister Gus? Over here, Minister Gus, please, sir. Right here. Stand to your feet, please.
God says, God says, I'm getting ready to have to cut you, Sherelle. I'm getting ready to have to cut you. Because that's the only way covenant is made through cutting. Cutting means to sever. Watch this. It means to divide into pieces. <laughs> because covenant is always made in where? Pieces. Covenant is always made in pieces. When you get a bad report, when you get a bad report of your children, when you get a bad report about yourself, when you're in a windstorm of life that you think is going to take your mind, that's where God makes his covenant. That's where he establishes his covenant. And he says, I'm getting ready to have to cut you. How does God cut? He does it with his word. Because his word is the sword. He does it with his word. As soon as God's word comes, the enemy always releases an opposite attack whenever word is released. Because he always comes against, watch this, the word of God. Pastor Jeanette, three weeks earlier, had just blessed you all with the series Anxiety Attack Back. And God says, Jeanette, you finna bless the world. You fixing to become the mother of nations with that word I placed in you, but you ain't ready yet. I gots to cut you. And it's not for your harm. It's so I can come down off into pieces when you don't think that you got enough to hold yourself together. Because I want you to know that you ain't responsible for keeping your hands clean. Come on. You ain't responsible for keeping your heart pure. You ain't responsible for uh, giving yourself the ability not being able to swear falsely. He says, that comes through my grace, my enabling power. You got to see this. You got to see this. You got to see this. The Bible says in Galatians 4, Abraham believed God, and God did what? Accounted it to him for, I looked that word accounted up. Accounted means to measure, to add together, to make, watch this, fit, or to make, add up. To measure, to add together, to add up, to make fit, to make it fit, to make it, I said, what, what is that? Account it, 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 hmm. God says, for I have reckoned I've looked at your faith and reckoned it to you as you have met my standards for righteousness. That's what it literally means. And Abraham believed God. And the Bible says, and God accounted it to him. God says, and when you believe me, right there, 
you met my standards for the blessing. Not the family you come from, not how holy you are, by your faith. And literally, it was like God was taking out his calculator and says, heathen, come from Ur of the Chaldees, a heathen people, didn't grow up in church, messed up situation, messed up family, bunch of, filled with a bunch of liars and deceivers. He said, ooh, that, uh, that, that equation is not working out to you out too well. He says, but let me do my math. God started accounting. <laughs> he started accounting. And he says, grace plus faith equals righteousness. Grace, no, 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 you don't fit. No, your life don't look like you, you should be blessed. No, your marriage does not look like you should be blessed. Let me add up my math. But according to my standards, because of your faith, you're righteous. Say, believe God. Jesus is our great high priest, the Bible says. Pastor Samuel and Deanna, would you come stand on both sides of me? This is the cup of blessing the Bible talks about. This is the cup of blessing. This, it's Jewish matzah bread. It's not bread that had risen because they had to rush out of Egypt that night. That's why it's flat. But he says the bread is not blessed and it's not ready for you to go and give it to others until it first God what are you doing with my life I'm breaking you into pieces I'm cut covenant with you. Why do I need to be in pieces? Why, why do we have to get to the pieces? So that by the time what I have given you to be a blessing to others, by the time you get it to them, they will look at it and you won't be able to boast in it yourself. But because of your brokenness, you say, I humbly give this to you. I humbly bless you with this. Whether it's money or whether it's a gift or whether it's whatever, I humbly bless you with it. Woo, that person sure is humble. But, that, but, but you can see blessings all around. Blessings is chasing them down. It's because they've been broken. And blessing don't come without breaking. So Jesus Christ said, if you're going to be blessed, you got to take my flesh so that you can identify with me. And you got to eat of it. So take the bread that you've been given, pull back the layering and pull out that wafer. Hold it up. We give thanks for it. Because you have cut covenant with us. And we were nowhere around when you did it. 
So help remind us that it's not our responsibility to make the promise come to pass in our life. All we have to do is believe God and obey God and do whatever he tells us to do. And the promise shall surely come to pass. Thank you for sending Jesus to make us righteous because we have no righteousness in and of ourselves. We give thanks for it and we bless it and we, because we bless it, we break it. Take and eat now. And the Bible says, this is literally how Jesus did it in the Bible. He said at table, he poured the wine. They didn't have little cups and they, they didn't drink out of separate, separate cups. He took the wine, he said, here Samuel, drink this, for this represents my blood. And you must fellowship with me in the covenant right to take of my blood. Take and drink now. Deanna, out of the same cup, you may not be going through exactly what I'm going through. But out of the same cup that I drink out of, if you're going to walk in blessing, your cup is coming too. Because we all drink from the same cup. Take Deanna and drink. Take your cup, lift it up. For this is the wine which represents the shed blood. But even the wine couldn't be wine without crushing, without grapes being crushed. You cannot be a blessing without crushing. We give thanks for it, for the crushing of Jesus Christ, the shed blood of Jesus Christ. We call it blessed because of the crushing. Take and drink now. But Jesus, you didn't have a drink out of your cup. I set aside this cup. I set it aside because I refuse to drink from that cup until we are all together again in the marriage feast of the Lamb. In other words, he was saying, until I make sure every promise that I promise you come to pass in your life, that cup will go untouched. And that cup is still sitting in heaven, untouched. And you should rejoice. Because he's saying, as long as that cup is untouched and you, and you keep your faith put in me, every promise that I promised you shall surely come to pass.